Hi, my name is James Flores with the product marketing team here at Okta. And today in this tutorial, we're going to go over one of the most common use cases in Okta, and that's provisioning users into Salesforce. But before we get started, you're going to want to have a few things ready. First, you want to have a user with a first name, last name, email address, and department. Second, you're going to want to have a Salesforce app already set up in Okta. Uh, you feel free to use a developer account to set that up. And third, you're going to need an authorized connection to both Okta and Salesforce from within workflows. If you have all that ready, then let's go ahead and dive into this tutorial. Let's get started. Here, we're already signed into Okta, so we're just going to jump over to the Workflow Console. Go ahead and hover over Workflow, and then click on Workflow Console. Once we're in the console, we're going to create a new flow from scratch. So on the top right, hit New Flow. Now, in order to trigger this flow, there has to be some type of an event. And in this case, that event's gonna be the app assignment event from Okta. So let's go ahead and build that event. So here we'll click on add event. And here, these are all my connected applications right now. I'll click on Okta. And here's the list of qualifying events. And we're gonna be working with user assigned to application. So in this scenario, when a user gets assigned to Salesforce, that's gonna be the event that triggers this flow. So we'll click on that. And here we'll pick our application, which is Salesforce. And we'll pick our app instance. And in my case, I only have one. So we'll click salesforce.com and hit done. So here we'll hit add app, uh, app action, which is gonna be the search function in Salesforce. So here again, pulls up my list of connected applications. I'm gonna click on Salesforce. And in here, I'm gonna look for search user which is here. I'm gonna choose how I'm gonna search for that user. In this case, I'm gonna search by username and click done. And now it's giving me a list of all the different results that can come up from the search results. And what I wanna know is I wanna see username, email, if they're active, and if the account's frozen. So I'll hit done. And in order to complete the search, it needs the query value. So here we're gonna give it the alternate name that's coming from Okta. We just go ahead and click and drag that here. So, so far our flow is triggering off an event in Okta, and then it's gonna take the alternate ID from Okta, go over to Salesforce and search for that user, and it's gonna return us this data. Okay, now we need to know what to do with the search results. Create a user or activate a user. And in order to do that, we need to add a function. So for this scenario, we're gonna add an if else function. So I'll go here and click on function and I'm going to select if else. And here, what we're going to look to is the username. And we want to know if that username is returned or if it's not returned. So we'll take the results here and drag it here. And if that username is empty, then that's really going to drive our logic here. So we'll select is empty. And I'll just put null here because it doesn't really count because it's going to look at our user ID from the results of this card. And if it's empty, then it's gonna continue with the logic. So here we have our if, if else branch. I wanna start here down at the bottom where the results equal false, because that's gonna tell us that there is an existing username. And from there, we need to decide if we're gonna activate this user. So in order to do this, we're gonna to have to continue the flow here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an, an, another function, and that's gonna be a continue if function. So we'll add that. And this function is really going to be keyed off of the user status, so whether or not they're active. So we'll pull that from our search results here, drag that over. And so now if the user is active and that value is set to say false, meaning they're not active, the next action we want to do is activate them. So let's go ahead and add an app action here. Again, an app action from our Salesforce connection. And we have activate user here. And what we're gonna feed into this is the user's alternate ID. So now let's decide what to do if the search results yield nothing, meaning the statement is true. Well, that means we have to create the user. So in order to create the user, we need to know all, their, all the information about that user and we can get that from Okta. So let's start this off with a read from Okta. So let's go ahead and add an app action. And this way we're gonna connect into Okta 
and we want to read the user because we want to know all that profile data about the user and because we need that information to determine how we create this user over in Salesforce. So we're going to do a read user. And these are all the search results that we're going to get uh, that's going to yield from that read. And we don't need all of this, so we're going to uncheck some of this. So that should cover everything I need. So I'll go ahead and hit oh, uh, done. And these are the search results gonna, that are going to come from that read. And in order uh, to find that user, we're going to go off of their uh, actual Okta user ID. So we'll drag that over there. So what we need to know now is what profile this user needs and what licenses they need. And in this configuration, all that's determined by department. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple of lookups in order to find what department gets what profile, what department gets what license. So we're going to build in a lookup here. So let's go ahead and hit um, add function. And let's see if it's in my recent. It's not. So I'll just search for it. Do a lookup. Okay. And this lookup is going to be based on the department because the department really drives what licenses you get and what profile you have. So go department. Let me go ahead and drag that over here and for our departments we have three we have sales marketing and operations and we're going to custom name this uh, the results of this to profile just so it's easier to follow so we'll change this to profile great so what that's going to do is based on the read results here it's going to look at the department and if your department matches one of these, then this is the result profile you have when it creates that user in Salesforce. So on top of the profile, we also need to know the licenses, the feature licenses. So we're going to do another lookup for that data. So we'll go here, add function. And again, that's a lookup just based on my search results there. That's again going to be based on department. So we'll drag this over. And again, we have the same three departments. And we're going to name this one again. This is going to be our um, feature license. Licenses. And this field is actually going to be a list because users can be assigned multiple licenses. So we're going to make these fields, uh, this field a list. So we'll check that box, make it a list. Hit save. And now we can fill in our data here. let's go ahead and add a new app action to, cre to actually create that user. So we'll hit the add app action. Uh, we're going to go to Salesforce and this time we're going to do create user. So search the list here for create user, create user. Okay. So this is the list of attributes that we're going to specify. Most of the defaults work for this example, except I need to check feature license names and I'll check department and hit done. And so now it's asking me for all the data that goes here. And so for our profile, which is here, I know that's the results from this lookup. Uh, I'll set the default language to English. Uh, for the feature license, that's the results from the lookup here. So we'll go ahead and add that in. And then the rest of this, we can pull from the Octa read card. And that, that's pretty much it for the flow. Now that you've built out this flow to provision users over to Salesforce, wouldn't it be great to be notified when this actually runs? Well, that's the great thing about workflows. You can build in all the notifications you want. So let's go ahead and compose a message in this workflow that tells us that this actually ran. And we'll start by adding a uh, function here. And that function is going to be a compose function. Compose. And here we're going to write a message. And this is going to say... Um, this workflow for user, uh, and we're going to take the alternate ID so we can reference attributes here. So bring that here, drag it here. This workflow for user with this alternate ID has been complete. Has been 
complete created. Yeah. Okay, so that's the message we're gonna send. And we're actually gonna use Gmail to send this. So we'll add an app action function here. So I'll hit Gmail and we're gonna do uh, send email. And this email is gonna go to me here. And the body of this message is actually gonna be the output of our compose function there. And that's it. We've just added a notification to this flow. Now that we've completed this entire workflow, let's go ahead and save it. So up here on the top left, we'll type in a name. Go ahead and save all the data for this and hit save. Now, what I want to show you is if you had trouble building out this flow yourself, the flow actually comes pre-configured. Let me go ahead and save this. So let's go back to um, home in workflows. All right, now if we search here for Salesforce, you'll see this create user in Salesforce basic. Go ahead and click on that flow. And this is the exact flow we just, we just went over. Um, this flow actually has built-in notes so you can understand what each of the different steps do. Um, but this is already pre-configured. So let's go ahead and save this run. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this on. And when you enable a flow, it takes about 60 seconds for the events to trigger. So we'll leave that, we'll turn that on and then we'll let it sit for about 60 seconds and then we'll give it a shot. All right, it's been about a minute now. So we're back here in Okta and I have this test user named Charles Manning. Charles Manning's part of Contoso.com. If we take a look at his profile, you'll see here he's got a username, first name, last name, email address, as well as a department which is set to sales. Currently, Charles is not assigned any Salesforce application. So let's go ahead and assign him Salesforce. We'll hit assign application, select this Salesforce application, hit assign, uh, double check that the department's there, and it is, it's sales. So we'll hit save and go back and hit done. And that's all you had to do. So let's go ahead and take a look at the workflow history here. So here we have our workflow and we'll click on flow history and we'll see that there was a successful uh, entry here. And if we look here, you see now our cards are filled in with data because we can see all the results from each, each step of the flow. And you can see here the create user card created username Charles Manning with Charles M at Contoso.com as a username. So let's go over to Salesforce and let's refresh our user list and see if Charles Manning is there. And there he is. He's active as a standard platform user as we specified in the flow. Let's take a look at that notification in action. I went ahead and added it to the other part of my if else statement so that if I activate a user, I'll get a notification. You can see here I added the compose card and the send email card. And what I've done is my test user, Charles Manning, I just deactivated him. So we take a look here, you can see Charles Manning is no longer active and he's no longer assigned the Salesforce app. So let's reassign it so we can see that notification. So reassign, we'll confirm he's part of sales. We'll hit save, done. Go over here to workflow and let's check out the flow history. And here you can see the compose information as well as the uh, send email information as well as the message ID that was responded from the email server. So if I go back here to Salesforce, let me refresh that and we'll take a look and we'll see that Charles Manning is now active and switch over to my email and refresh that. And you can see I've received an email telling me that the user was uh, activated.